several months ago I decided I would begin video recording my exploration of uh, conflict and historical wargaming. Um, whether Hex Encounter, uh, miniatures, or even occasional reference to or discussions of or even replays of computer war games. So this is another installment uh, in this ongoing documentary. I uh, thought I would pull out Crusades 2, uh, also 3W, Robert Markham, published in 1994. Like many of the games uh, in the Royals and Roundheads family of games, this is a quad. Uh, includes four separate distinct battles. And one of the reasons that I continue to come back to this uh, family of games is the opportunity to refight some uh, lesser known battles and I think certainly uh, battles that have had very little or even no treatment in a published war game. Um, so what, what I'm going to do here, what I have set up, uh, is the Battle of Nicopolis, which was fought on September 25th. Uh, 1396. Um, it was fought between approximately 16,000 Christian forces and 20,000 Ottomans. Um, very little is known, uh, obviously, like many battles uh, before the like many battles before the for the uh, 19th century. Um, not a lot of details are known. Casualties wise, um, the Ottomans won the battle, but took more casualties than the defeated Christians. Uh, the battle took place uh, near Nikopol in modern day Bulgaria. Um, so, the little bit of uh, historical background Sultan Bayezid, Murad's successor as Ottoman leader, was an energetic warrior who earned the nickname Thunderbolt and laid siege, siege to Constantinople itself. Um, uh, so we have um, Bayezid is uh, so we already mentioned Bayezid. The um, here he is. He is the overall leader for the um, for the. Ottoman side. So there is Bayezid. He has um, a command span of seven. Whoops, seven, which is very good, and a very nice combat bonus of plus two. Uh, um, so that's Bayezid. So obviously the. Um, Orange uh, forces over here are the uh, Ottomans. I have uh, my mandatory orange die to go with them. And over here, the purple forces are the Christians under Sigismund with my mandatory purple die. This is an aspect of my Wargamer OCD uh, when I play Solitaire. These days, it seems like I have to have color coded dice. Um, so back to the background. Uh, Fury, he would be next to face Bayezid's army. King Sigismund uh, of Hungary appealed to the French court for a crusade against the Turks. As France and England were at peace, there were many knights eager for a chance to show their valor. So this is Sigismund over here. Sigismund, interestingly, um, Interestingly, he has a below average command span of four, but a very nice uh, plus two combat bonus uh, like Biasid. Um, um, the Comte de Nevers, son of the Duke of Burgundy, uh, and other notables set off for Hungary with some 8,000 men. There they met up with Sigismund's army and advanced down the Danube into Ottoman-controlled Bulgaria. I should point out that on this map, there's not a lot of terrain. All of this portion is just clear, uh, by game terms, clear open uh, level 2 terrain. Um, 
No north seeking arrow, but I think I think that way's north. The map does say that way to Nicopolis, and Nicopolis was under siege and is on the I think the south side of the Danube, which is just off the map uh, that way. Um, I'll f I, and I'll, since I mentioned the terrain here. Um, Really, the only terrain we have is, is this level two open terrain, the road that goes all the way across the map from, I think, north to south. Um, and over here, we have obviously the slope. And over here, the darker hexides, that is steep slope. And that is pretty much all the terrain that we'll be dealing with. So level one, well, I should not have to deal with level one or two, really just slope, steep slope, and road. Uh, that's it. So now I want to mention this because some of the maps I've, I've looked at for this battle show the the Christians set up in what looks like light woods. Now there are definitely no light woods on this map. This is all open terrain. So I guess uh, maybe the maps that I was looking at we're showing a different time than what the battle here is supposed to start, represent. The battle will start at 0930 in the morning. Um, maybe the Christians had already moved out of the woods this way, so maybe the woods are off the map that way. Um, or maybe, because they're light woods, um, maybe the designer figured that there was no game impact, and so just left the light woods off uh, as a simplification. Uh, I don't know. I just find it interesting that at least initially, or I, I shouldn't say initially, at some point the Christians were formed up in roughly the way that the game portrays here, but um, like that. Um, we have the basically the we have this formation over here, main formation, a lead formation, and a formation over here. Um, that all looks roughly as I've seen on maps, except that uh, some of them show these formations set up like this in light woods. Um, all right, so a force of Knights Hospitaller sailed from Rhodes uh, to join them. The Christian army laid siege to the Ottoman stronghold of Nicopolis believing Bayezid to be far away. But the Sultan hurried north by forced marches and took up positions. So if if this is north, Nicopolis is being besieged off the map that way. And this is the this is the Sultan's um, Ottoman army. So if that is north, then this does show them advancing south to north. Um, Workman took a position a few miles outside Nicopolis, brushing aside appeals for caution. From King Sigismund, the French knights insisted on opening the battle with a charge. Uh, I think the French knights are, is this formation right here. They begin the battle with a... So I'm using the historical um, commands that are given in this scenario setup. So the three uh, formations behind here start with reserve uh, orders, whereas the French knights there begin with the attack order, and I think they're given as FR, they are, ah, yep, they are heavy cavalry, so I assume these are the French knights under Jean Pure. Pur. Um, uh, many were unhorsed. Yeah, many were unhorsed by sharpened stakes planted in their path or arrow fire, but they fought on with great valor on foot, only to be enveloped by the Ottoman Sapahis, those are, I think, all right, let's we'll zoom in a little bit more now. So the French knights are under Jean Pur, Pur, yeah, that's our one. Um, and he actually has a pretty good command value of four, slightly below average. Um, command span of four and a combat bonus of one. And actually, now that I think about it, Uh, why does he have an asterisk after his command value? 
unless that's left over from an earlier design uh, rule. rule. Hmm. I don't remember ever seeing that. <laughs> um, let, let me look for a scenario rule that I didn't notice. Um, hmm. If I missed it, um, I still don't see it. I really wonder whether historic—I mean, historically—the French knights charged and could not be. Um, I mean, they charged on their own, uh, without you know an order from Sigismund. So maybe. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say maybe the asterisk means that you cannot change his order, but if you can't change his order, why have a command value of four anyways? Huh. I don't know. I just noticed that now. Yeah, okay. So we have French knights here. Um, they are uh, French knights. Um, morale is seven. Um, uh, movement value of six and combat strength of six on their non-charging side, which is the front of the uh, the counter. And on the back, their morale goes up to eight. Movement obviously goes up to seven, and their combat value doubles to twelve. Um, and they all look the same there, actually. Mm, oh no. There are two stronger uh, knights, which actually I put Jean Pierre with uh, with the stronger knights. So these guys, these guys have a combat value of eight, and they charge, yeah, at sixteen. So, and I need to remember to take advantage of charging ability. Of those heavy cavalry. All right. Um, Sapahis, Sapahis, that's where I left off. Sapahis are back here. Um, there are three of these Sapahi units. So they are in game terms. They are um, cavalry. Wow, nice, very nice strength of 12. Uh, high morale of 8. But are they? What are they considered? They are not. They're considered regular cavalry, I guess. Well, I don't guess, but it looks like it looks like that's a reduced side, not a charging side. So the Sapahis are not heavy cavalry. Now, the way to check that is to go to the rules and to look for the the summary by icon. So. So we're okay. There, there's the Sapahi, um, and there is next to the, the chit. There is the image, um, which actually is the exact same Sapahi A, and and you see it's cavalry, not heavy cavalry. So they do not charge. They have a full strength and a reduced side. Two steps. Okay. So the. That tells me, yeah, that tells me that, not surprisingly, the, yeah, that tells me that, not surprisingly, the Ottoman side uh, does not have any heavy cavalry. Even the Serbs over here, even the Serbs over here are two strength cavalry units, not heavy cavalry, not three step uh, heavy cavalry. As you can see, again, the Ottomans will be the first player. Okay. Um, so the Sapahis. So obviously, when the um, when the French knights charged, uh, they were cut down, um, enveloped by the Ottoman Sapahis here, and didn't fare so well. Sigismund then led the reserves into the battle. So that must be his, uh, yeah, that's his command there. Uh, reserved into the battle and looked on the point, uh, looked on the point of carrying the day. 
when bias hits Serbian, back to the Serbians, there. Um, so the Serbian command over here of cavalry under the Prince of Serbia. Um, bias hits Serbian allies under Stefan Lazarevich. Lazarevic, so He's, he's given his Prince of Serbia here, but he was um, Lazarevich, Stefan Lazarevich, weighed in with a cavalry charge that put the knights to flight. Isn't that interesting? The historical summary I'm reading has these guys charging. Um, but in rule sense, I think in rule sense, there's only heavy cavalry charges are different than, okay, anyways, we'll get to that later. So Lazarevich has a um, command value of four, that's pretty low, a command rating of four, a command span of, average command span of five, and a combat bonus of plus one. Um, I haven't even talked about replacement meters, by the way, so real quick, if Lazarevich fall, if Lazarevich falls in battle, right, um, you flip it over and a replacement leader comes back. There's the asterisk again. Hmm. Maybe it's in advanced rules. Yeah. Anyways, so a replacement leader on the back side, different values. Um, We'll see if that ever happens in a replay. I obviously I have had leaders fall in battle and used replacement leaders in the past. Um, um, put the knights to flight. So the Serbs counterattacked. Um, I think that the Christians, when they formed up for battle, did not notice at all and were not aware of the Serbs here, who in game terms are on the other side of this. Um, this um, slope down here on the level one, but, but historically they charged and uh, uh, put the Christian knights to flight. Only a few escaped by boat or on foot. About 3,000 were taken prisoner, and most of those were slaughtered the next day. So that's what we have as a historical background to the Battle of Nicopolis. Um, Kind of, we've already gone over the uh, initial uh, lay of the land and formations. Um, again, the, the Christians have reserve orders for the three commands in the rear and attack uh, order for the French knights. Um, the, uh, by the way, for the Ottoman deployment, they have a large, rather large, skirmish uh, formation here. Uh, we have a mixture of foot and uh, looks like mounted bows. Um, yeah, it looks like we have uh, mounted and dismounted bows here. These are irregular forces, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, then we have the Janissaries. The Janissaries with Bayezid. Um, and he has a couple of uh, cavalry with him. Uh, and he has a stand order. And we talked, oh, and the uh, Sapahis go with Bayezid's command. You can tell that because they all have the yellow stripe. That's a formation indicator. Uh, and then we already talked about the Serbs over there. So with that, I think we're ready to begin. Um, I think I can do at this point a uh, quick, uh, quick rule summary. Um, having gotten all the basics back into mind, um, we already talked about the chits. Um, I think uh, here's some Valachian um, infantry. Um, yeah, infantry, so Valachian infantry, um, that is a, uh, so the purple stripe tells what formation he goes to, um, 
Wall C on the left is just a unit ID. The G on the top right in this game is, is a setup indicator. Um, five is his morale. Uh, the three in the lower right is his movement allowance, and the five in the lower center is his combat value. He is uh, he has two steps because he has a reduced side. Um, so he reduces to there we go. He reduces his morale goes oh, drops significantly to three. His movement drops off to two, and his combat value drops to three. In this game, this is a two-step unit, uh, eliminated after that. In this game, the um, in this game, a skirmish unit, for example, oops, skirmish unit, which same type of values as we just looked at, except that the asterisk still is an indicator that this unit can use ranged fire, but he has nothing on his back, a blank backside. Um, so this is a one-step unit. Will only survive one hit. I'm sorry. Will not survive more than one hit. Will not survive more than one hit. The white bar across the, the counter in this game is your indicator that this is a skirmish unit. And remember, skirmish units do not follow uh, command chips. All right. So basically, the the um, the sequence of play is uh, basically this the game turn the game turn begins with a uh, orders phase uh, basically the main thing in the orders phase is that both players will attempt to change uh, the orders the command shits that each of their leaders are currently under currently executing um, basically to do that you, you're going to basically roll Here's Mercia, um, the Valachian leader. Um, to change his order, you're going to roll uh, four or less on a ten-sided die. Four or less because of his uh, command rating of four. The only modifier is you'll subtract one from the die, making it easier. If the leader here, Mercia, is within the command span of the overall leader. So again, Sigismund is the overall leader. You can tell that because he has the double icon in this game. So if Mercia is within the command span of Sigismund, his command span being four, he'll subtract one from the die roll to change Mercia's orders. Uh, and yeah, that's the only modifier. If, you're, if you roll low enough, if you roll under his, uh, equal to or less than his command rating, you can change his order. Um, so both players are doing that during the orders phase. Um, and then uh, so that's the orders phase. Then we go to the first player. The scenario tells you who the first player is. I like to mark it in case I have to step away from the game. And I don't want to think too hard when I come back. First player uh, in this battle are the Ottomans. Again, you look to the scenario. The scenario tells you who the first player is. So the first player is going to execute First player is going to execute a um, movement phase, a combat phase, then a rally phase. Um, e each of these are pretty straightforward. In the movement phase, you're going to first check for units to be out of command. You check for units to be out of command. The thing to remember, there we go, out of command. The thing to remember about um, being in or out of command is tracing okay, basically a command line, so to speak to the unit, and that line cannot go through, obviously cannot go through enemy uh, units, and it cannot go through enemy Zocs either, unless that enemy Zoc is also occupied by a friendly unit. And then beyond that, you can string as many units as you want, as long as they're adjacent, as long as you can trace adjacent units back to a unit which is in command. So even though, yes, these leaders have set numerical command spans, that's actually not a completely hard command span because you can, again, you can um, chain as many friendly units as you want that are adjacent. Um, uh, then you move. So first you check for out of command, mark units out of command that are found to be out of command, and then do, do your movement. Um, now movement is not completely free. 
You have to pay attention to what orders they're under, like a stand order. A stand order, you're limited to one hex. Um, in attack order, you must move a minimum of one half of your movement allowance rounded up, and you must end your move closer to enemy units. Um, so all the different order stipulations will control what your movement options are. Um, then we go to the combat phase. Combat phase has two general steps. First you do fire combat, then melee. So the fire combat phase is broken up into defensive fire step first, followed by offensive fire. So defensive fire is the non-phasing player does all ranged combat that's el all executes all eligible ranged combat. Then the offensive fire takes place, or the phasing player does the same. Then you go to melee. Um, to make things a little harder, I, I emphasize in my own um, solitaire play to mark all melees first, uh, then execute each melee um, one at a time in, in, in my, in, yeah, as, as planned. Um, basically, melee has the attacker checking morale. Uh, then there may be uh, options to retreat before combat. Then the defender checks morale. Then both players roll on the melee table uh, for results, which are um, implemented simultaneously. Then, then we have if heavy cavalry, if heavy cavalry are currently charging, so they're on their charge side, then the um, and the heavy cavalry uh, successfully um, attack and drive their target back then the heavy cavalry can move up to four more movement points and engage in a second melee um, then you go to the rally phase rally phase is basically two steps first step um, the phasing player attempts to rally all eligible routed units and then Starting with game turn five in this in these uh, rules, starting with game turn five, the other player, the second player, not I shouldn't say second, the other player, the non-phasing player, will, uh, if uh, eligible, roll for sudden victory. Um, again, I, I, I jotted down the levels that I'll be looking for. So if Turkish losses get to fifty-eight or more, then the Crusaders are rolling for victory. If the Crusader losses get to 55 or more, the Turkish side is rolling for victory on the table. Tables given in the scenario. Um, um, and then you switch, and the second player has the same type of movement phase. Second player has the same type of combat phase, and the second player has the same type of rally phase. And that is a, a complete game turn. Um, um, Uh, with the units, um, go back to this Velakian infantry. Um, I think the movement allowance of three is all pretty straightforward. Um, nothing unusual movement, but the thing to remember about the morale value. Um, this infantry unit has a morale of five. You're basically using morale to, uh, I'll grab a heavy cavalry again, so morale. Um, you're basically rolling morale to commit to melee as both attacker and defender. You're rolling melee to rally, and you're rolling melee as a combat result of both fire and melee combat. In addition, the heavy cavalry are conducting a morale check to switch from non-charging to charging um, status or mode. That's a morale check as well. So that is morale. Um, I think that's basically the, uh, the basics. Uh, so we'll... Uh, Take a break here and then we will start with the first turn of the Battle of Nicopolis.